Right, let's play 18 holes on my home course of Dunfermline Golf Club. All shots will be included in this as an 8 handicapper. First hole, 275 yard par 4 stroke index 18. I've gone with my 5 iron here as I usually do on this hole and I've managed to find the first cut just on the left hand side. About 85 yards from the green, gap wedge here, this looked all over the pin in the air but unfortunately it came up just that little bit short, in fact 25 foot short. Anyway, put a good stroke on the initial putt and left it just about a foot to the right hand side so an easy tap in for a par. The second hole is a 188 yard par 3, it's quite a long hole, I've gone with a 6 iron here and I've struck this one really really well, landing just at the front edge of the green. Now with the pin in the front position I've got to go up this little bit of a slope and then down left to right and unfortunately I've just not hit this one high enough but that's another tap in and usually I'd be more than happy with two pars to start my round here on this golf course. The third hole is a 421 yard par 4. You need to get away with a decent drive here. You cannot go left into the trees or right into the other trees and unfortunately I have sent my drive right. So I've found the thick rough, all I'm looking to do here is just hit a 6 iron and advance it up next to the green. Which is what I've managed to do, unfortunately though the lie here is really poor and with this particular chip shot I've tried to be a little bit too cute and I've popped down to the right hand side of the pin. I thought the last lie was bad, this one is considerably worse, it's basically a bare patch underneath my ball surrounded by lots of thick rough and yep that's what happened. So I kept the 60 in hand, looking to just chip this one close and hopefully walk off with a double bogey. Tap in here for a double bogey 6 which is not great but it could have been much much worse. Now the 4th hole here is a 353 yard par 4, you're looking to basically just send this one straight down the middle, there's a lot of danger right. I faded it off the trees on the left and it found the perfect landing spot where it releases down the hill. For these shots I like to use my ShotScope Pro LX laser rangefinder which has slope technology built in and this allows me to calculate the distance I need to hit to the pin if there's an elevation at play. With this one it was just a pitching wedge and I've sent it to the back left of the green. Fortunately here I was a bit concerned it was going to roll off but it managed to hold on. Difficult little putt here, uphill, quick, and it's left to right. You'll see I've sent it by right and it kept going. So this is a difficult one to make par, and of course I have left it right on the edge. So unfortunately, that's a tap in there for a bogey. We're now three over through four holes. The fifth hole is surrounded by bunkers. It's quite a short par three, but it's very difficult. I've gone with the seven iron here, and I've hit this one so, so well. As you can see, I've landed just a few feet from the putt, left to right or downhill, and I've just sent that one by to the right, but I'm always happy leaving that hole with a par. Now the 6th hole at the Fermont is my favourite hole in the course, it's a beautiful par 4 dogleg left to right which exposes Pitfern Castle as you get to the top of the hill. I've gone with my 3 wood here which means that I can't really bring the trees in the background into play, I've hit the perfect fade down to a flat landing spot, that's the ideal tee shot. Now I've got my 9 iron in hand, we've got about 130 yards to the pin downhill and as usual I've missed this green, I don't know how I do it every single time but I'm down there on the right hand side. Luckily I've got my little 60 degree wedge in hand which I'm fairly comfortable with around the green and I've pitched this one nice and close so I should be able to make the par. But of course my putter is not going hot today and that's a tap in there for a bogey. Now at 4 over I'm looking to take advantage of this par 5 7th hole, it's a dog leg left to right, 465 yards, I like to hit 3 wood off of this tee which hopefully should leave me in the middle of the fairway like this. Now I'm 220 from the front of the green here, I've gone with my 5 iron just to try and advance it up there and get that little bit closer to the green. 
Ok so we're about 50 yards from the green here looking to hit the sand wedge and get this one in close. It's come out pretty hot which has left it above the pin and that's not ideal on this green. This is a really slippery right to left downhiller and as usual I have missed it. So it's a tap in for par on a hole that I really really needed to birdie. Right onto the 8th hole here, now you want to hit a nice straight drive, there is a little bit of room down the right hand side but not really that much room. In this case I was thinking this was going to be in big trouble. However when I got there I found I'd cleared the tree and had a 9 iron in from about 130 yards from the rough. Hit this one straight at the pin and I thought this had a great chance of stopping by but of course because it was coming out of the rough it's pitched near the pin and it has released and ran down the green. Uphill putt here, put a good stroke on this one, just a little bit to the right, and you've seen my putt in it, I was a bit concerned about this one, but it's a good tap in for par. Looking to close out the front line on a high, this is the ninth hole, 172 yard, par 3. I've gone with my 6 iron here, and I'm hoping to hit the green, but unfortunately I have pushed this one quite severely to the right hand side. As you'll see, I've got to go over this bunker and then land on the green and I've just got underneath it too much and we're now in the bunker for our third shot. So not only have I left myself in the bunker, but it's a bit of an awkward stance here. Popped out nicely with the 60 though and I have a chance to walk away with a bogey but unfortunately, once again, that's a two putt. So we finished the front nine and we are six over par and looking for much more from the back nine. Now the 10th hole is a 360 yard par 4, this is quite a difficult hole, you need to get a good drive away here. I've aimed for the right hand side which is exactly where I've landed, I'm a little bit further right than I'd like, but you'll see here I've got a shot with the 9 iron, I've got to go over two of these trees, struck this one really really well and it lands just to the right hand side of the green around about pin high. Now this is a tricky putt here, but unfortunately I'm aiming left when it goes right to left, so it's never got a chance of going in. However, it's a tap in for par, we've steadied the ship, and this is a hole I'd always be happy to make a par on. The 11th hole at Dunfermline is a 275 yard par 4, it's a great risk and reward hole. I prefer to take the 3 wood like I am here, it just takes the danger that the driver brings into play out of the equation. This was one of the best shots I hit all day, straight down the middle, leaving only 50 yards with my sand wedge, and I've opted to go a little bit past the pin here because there's a big slope at the front of the green. The only downside is I now have quite a slippery downhill left to right putt, which unfortunately as has been prevalent in this video, I have missed again. But anyway, it's a tap in for par. The 12th hole is a 332 yard straight par 4, so I'm taking the driver with this one and I'm looking to get right down the middle with this tee shot and that's exactly what I've done, so I've followed up a good 3 wood with a really decent driver. Now we're in position A on the fairway, 85 yards out, I've gone with my 54 degree wedge and unfortunately I have pulled that left. Now this is a tricky putt, I'm putting over this little brown patch on the green, put a good stroke on this one, but once again it's a missed opportunity for the birdie and a tap in for par. The 13th is a 150 yard par 3 surrounded by bunkers and it's an upturned saucer like green. Now this is one that I hardly ever managed to hit the green. I've hit a really really nice 6 iron here and left it just at the back left. It's quite a difficult quick putt here going from left to right and you can see I'm actually asking it to slow down here because I thought it was going to race by but that's another solid 2 putt and we're in for par and another difficult hole taken care of. Statistically this is the most difficult hole on the golf course and you need to hit a solid drive right down the middle here which is exactly what I have managed. If you find any of these trees you're in big trouble but this one is right down the middle and I'm left about 100 yards which is perfect for this little club, a £3 charity shop purchase. I love that golf club. Now I've sent this one just short of the pin, the short right but there's a good opportunity here to make a birdie. I put a good stroke on this one, thought it was good for line, just a little bit off for pace, so that's another par on the card and I'm not going to complain when I'm still 6 over. Noticed a little pitch mark here, so just repaired that before I was leaving the green. Now this is the 15th hole, it's a dog leg right to left, I opt for the 
three wood off of the tee more often than not in this hole, just looking to fade it off of that tree on the left hand side. I faded this quite a bit more than I expected but to be honest it's safe there and I found quite a tough lie there with the um, rough but I've gone with my hybrid for this one just to advance it up the fairway. Now unfortunately I found the rough again so we've gone with the 54 degree here from around about 80 yards and I've managed to pop that onto the green and this looked pretty close. Good chance here to make a birdie uphill left to right are but unfortunately I've just sent that to the right. It's another tap in for par. Now this little par 3 is only 151 yards, it's a stunning little hole surrounded by bunkers so you need to have a good tee shot here which is exactly what I have not done and as you can see I have sent that out to the right hand side. This is a tricky bunker shot, there's quite a lot of green to work with before the pin so I've taken my 56 here hoping that it'll just release and run out and I'm really chuffed with how that bunker shot has come out. Of course I always make sure to rake the bunker after I've been in it and at our course we're asked to leave the rakes in the bunker after you have raked it but comment below to let me know what you do with the rakes at your course. Okay so I'm looking to make par here with this, this will be a big save for me and it's straight into the cup. You can see how delighted I am to keep the par train going. Right we're still six over, let's try and make some birdies. This is the 453 yard par for 17th. You need to hit a fade on this one and what you want to do is not go quite as far right as I have there where I've got to be honest I thought this one was in the trees. The good news is I found the ball, the bad news was it was 200 yards to the green and all I can do is muscle out with a 7 iron to try and advance the ball a little bit further down the fairway. Now I've managed to find the rough here so there's no way of stopping this one close especially as the green runs away downhill so I'm looking to just find the green with this one and hope hopefully manage to make my par. This is a tall order, it's a long putt uphill, made a really good stroke here but unfortunately just a little bit left of the pin and that's a tap in for bogey so we're now 7 over par. The 18th hole is a straight par 5, there's not much danger left but there's a lot of danger now to bounce right. I've gone with the driver here and I've managed to absolutely smash this one right down the middle which is position 8 and gives me the chance to go for the green in 2. I've got my 3 wood here, all the dangers down the right hand side but unfortunately I have just hit a daisy cutter there to the left hand side, barely even got 100 yards with that one. We've got the 50 out here though, under this branch, sending it towards the green and the good news with this one is it's bounced just on the left hand side of the green and ran in and we've got a chance here to make a birdie. But of course it's late in the evening, the greens are slower and I've missed every single birdie putt today so that's a two putt for par. Okay so that's a 7 over round of 77. Given I didn't have my best stuff there I'm delighted to come in under handicap and to be honest that's not a terrible round of golf. Thanks very much for watching this video, remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed it and feel free to check out these videos here if you enjoyed this one.